What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to be going through my top five moments of the 2021 season across the year, on and off the field. It was a pretty uh, interesting year for Port Adelaide, but there were some highlights throughout them all. So I'm going to pinpoint some of the positive moments that happened throughout the season and reminisce about what's been a pretty, pretty interesting year, as I said, for 2021. Ended pretty badly, as we know. But overall, as an isolated season, I've seen a lot of reviews come out, um, people rating the season, a lot of variable numbers. Oh, I personally give it an 8 out of 10 as an isolated season. But in terms of what we wanted and what our goal was and, and all about the talk and everything that we put out into the media as such, it's probably a 4 out of 10 overall with what we've been building for the last few years. And I can definitely see that um, that that. You know, variance in uh, people's opinions when it comes to 2021 as a season compared to 2020 overall. So nonetheless, let's pinpoint some favorite moments from the year. These are my top five moments of 2021. We always wanted to get the four points, the big milestone for Trav, so um, no, I'm so so honored to be able to play with him and call him a close mate as well. It was, yeah, it was a big privilege and I was so happy. Coming in at number five, I couldn't leave this out, Travis Bokes' 300th game on Friday night it was meant to be at the Adelaide Oval in front of 40,000 plus, but in the end played in front of an empty stadium at Marvel against Collingwood. We got the job done by 20 odd points, but it was a massive occasion for Port Adelaide and he equaled the game's record the next week as well. And such a massive achievement for Bokey and he's now become the all times games uh, record holder. He's currently still playing. He's going to go into 2022 and the night in itself was such a special moment for Port Adelaide fans because we all love Bokey. We all know how much uh, he puts in, how much effort he has and how much love he has for the club. And I think as a moment isolated in this season, it was such a touching uh, emotional moment and so great to see him. To get, for him to get the job done and the season he had in general was just fantastic. But to celebrate him on his own on a night, Friday night footy, um, his own prime time slot uh, was such a special occasion. And, that's why it's sitting pretty at number five. Number four, I'm going to go Clutch Gray. Not only did he do it once, he did it twice. He did it uh, against Richmond in round four and then again in the uh, round 23 game against the Bulldogs, which in itself is probably a highlight. It's a massive, massive victory. This to put them in front. 35 metre kick and Robbie Gray has done it. Port Adelaide have hit the front. They have hit the front by three points. As we know, it set us up for a top two finish. But the Richmond game as well, in front of our fans, 30-odd thousand at the Adelaide Oval that night. It was such a big game because we were playing against the team that knocked us out in the finals in 2020. Uh, a massive occasion, Friday night footy, and he gets the job done with four minutes to play. He's done it countless amounts of times, being clutch grey. And uh, to see him do it, not once, but twice, throughout this season was a hell of a achievement. So that was a massive highlight and great to see. So Robbie Gray to put Port back in front with just over four remaining. That's pretty good. That's damn good. Number three, I'm pinpointing as a whole the qualifying final win. Um, now, it didn't eventuate into anything after that week, but I think as a game where we needed to get the monkey off the back. We were playing Geelong, you know, a top four team, and we had that monkey where we couldn't beat top four teams throughout the season to get there, to get the Adelaide Oval in front of 25,500 people and basically blow them off the park is a positive sign for what we could be doing um, consistently going through the final series. But we didn't eventuate on that afterwards, and that was such a shame after a very good performance in the qualifying final. But just the four-quarter performance, the one we've been making and dreaming that we'd do eventually and I think we played our grand final that night uh, in a qualifying final uh, which was such a shame but uh, such a perfect performance and um, it definitely was a highlight and to be a part of it and be there uh, was such a, a massive achievement so if we can create that whole atmosphere and that whole energy that we had in that game next year in 2022 then I'll believe that I think we can do a lot more damage but until then it's hard to Hard to say anything about next year, but we're looking at 2021, and, and that was number three. Work, high footy, and here is the man at the moment. He is doing an exceptional job across half-back. Sets up another opportunity for Amon. Amon launches a long ball. Big pack of players. Dixon in front. Fantasia around the corner with a dribbler. Horazio Fantasia. Number two. Now, I think 
this as a whole is a very big highlight because it's the timing, it's who does it, and it's clutch. It's not Robbie Gray. It's Scotty Lysette against the Sydney Swans, round 15, Adelaide Oval with two goals down. Um, Buddy Franklin was putting on a clinic and we needed some spark. We needed something to happen in the last couple of minutes. Sam Mays, the sub, super sub, dribbles one home, um, puts us back in front. And then with a minute to go, you've got Scotty Lysette, the ruckman, in the pocket at the Adelaide Oval, swinging around on his right foot after getting a handball from Marshall and slotting it. And what makes this moment even better is Anthony Hudson's commentary. Market just adds it. Now Marshall. Marshall gone. Did he dispose of it legally? The ruckman. Scotty Lysette. Beat him up. Scotty's kicked the match winner. For me, that is... That's my favourite moment on field from the year, and I know a lot of others uh, might vary, and I hope you guys are commenting below what you have as a favourite highlight for the year. And um, It was such a special um, game, albeit round 15, but it was a top eight, time and, uh, top eight team, and at the time we were getting ridiculed for not beating top eight teams. So to beat Sydney like that in, in front of our fans, I didn't get to attend that game, but it was such a great occasion as well. And um, that was a great on-field highlight, and I think arguably the one I was most excited about seeing uh, when I was watching it. But going into number one, it has to be Ollie Wines. Ollie Wines, Brownlow. You know, if there was ever a moment to win a Brownlow medal, it's probably in the Premiership year, but we didn't win the Premiership. So to win a Brownlow medal felt like for a lot of Port fans winning the Premiership, uh, such a great individual award. But I think, as Ollie said perfectly, it, it culminates into what, describes the team and you know it's such a team effort for him to get that award and it was such such a great honor you know to win um, a Brownlow medal and I think for him personally he'll take that in his stride and that that movement and um, that momentum sorry uh, will go into next year and become an even better player but you know that's so great to see our first ever Brownlow medalist creates history once again and I look forward to seeing what Ollie does in 2022 but that was you know that was the pinnacle of the year Ollie Wines winning the 2021 Brownlow medal. Ah, uh, Gray, one vote. Port Adelaide, O Wines, two votes. Port Adelaide, T vote, three votes. And I declare the winner of the 2021 Brownlow medal is Ollie Wines of the Port Adelaide Football Club. And that's it. That's my top five moments of 2021. Let me know in the comments below what your top five moments or what your favourite moment was for the year. And it could be anything, um, but let me know in the comments because it was a pretty good year, nonetheless, besides what had happened um, to end it. But it was a pretty good year in terms of being a year in itself. So on to next year. Hopefully more moments to come, a lot more positive. And hopefully the number one is us lifting the cup. We'll wait and see. But thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way across the rest of the year into the draft and also bring it back in 2022. Look forward to it. Thank you so much for watching, Port fans. My name is Anthony. And as always, count the pair.